Good evening and welcome to the July 19th, 2016, 5.30 p.m. Commissioner hearing. Let the record reflect that all three commissioners are present uh, this evening. Just as a way of introduction, if you can uh, make sure that your cell phones are on silence so that they uh, won't interrupt the hearing. And if you do need to take a call, if you'll step out the door and far enough away that your conversation uh, won't distract those who are speaking in here. And if, if anyone wishes to testify tonight, either at an open public forum or on any of the hearing items, if you want to fill out uh, this yellow form, um, they are right outside the door. So with that, if you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. So we start all of our evening meetings with um, an, one of two open public forums. This is an opportunity for the public to speak on any item that is not currently on our agenda. And we do have um, Alan McDowell present who is going to speak with us. You'll have three minutes to speak. Again, this is an opportunity for any, any of the public to speak on an item for three minutes on any item that is not part of our agenda. So, Alan, you are familiar with this process. Welcome. Alan McDowell, 2207 East Francis, apartment 105. Um, tonight I'm gonna to talk about mental, medical mental health and um, the county. I'm stating that diagnostic methods for reporting are fabricated reporting procedures based on over 900 pages of diagnosis that have resulted in the worst human rights abuses, torture techniques, and deaths in this nation's history. These methods are continually used throughout the Spokane County Regional Support Network and are costing Spokane County um, tens of millions of dollars per year. Diagnostic methods also detain and torture citizens on religious beliefs uh, with multiple diagnosis in those 900 pages. The only defense against fabricated reporting for torture um, through slander in the medical mental health system Providing all citizens is providing all citizens proper advanced directive applications of any on any detainment to provide incident reporting techniques that law enforcement um, that deny law enforcement the opportunity to false report, mislead, or accidentally confuse reports. Uh, so this this is called the dialectical filer, and if an individual has an application and a uh, and the incidents in their cell phone in the future. Uh, they'll be able to use uh, different products that I'm de designing like the dialectical filer and I just uh, designed the uh, dialectical dialect checker um, for different dialects um, that I'm working on. But this is office slander. And so individuals at the bottom, you see the vocabulary. An individual will be able to slide in, will first stop the officer from reporting anything and say, state that they're pleading the Fifth Amendment. And then um, second, um, use it, pleading the Fifth to use the First Amendment. So um, the officer will leave the individual alone and then the citizen will fill out their own police reports in the future, sending the police reports to the email addresses of the officers. And, and in county, it'd be the sheriffs. So the individual has the right to go through vocabulary to describe different parts of an incident. And so if this is office slander, what was the purpose for being in the office? What was the question? What was the answer? What was the interpretation and the answer that created an action? And what was the result that, create, that, that ended up in you know, a positive result from being in the office? So a lot of the time, you know, politics is rough and uh, individuals get slandered. Um, falsely, um, and so uh, below there's there's a, a question time. So if it was like 10 seconds or wh whatever the time of the question was, and was the question understood? Which the understood part I got from the Department of Justice on a on a question, but uh, voice tone in the manner of the customer and voice tone in the manner of the worker, and individuals can start filling this stuff out in any office so that if anything comes up in the future, which in DC a lot of stuff has come up and come up all over the country, um, individuals can have things filled out before anything actually happens. But this is not only used for office slander or it's, it's used for other uh, incident reports. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Alan, very much for joining us tonight. 
there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight under open public forum? Second call for anyone wishing to speak tonight? Third and final call. See no one moving forward, I'm gonna go ahead and close open public forum and move on to item number four in our agenda, which is a proclamation to proclaim August 7th, 2016, Purple Heart Day. Commissioner French. So it's, um, it's with a great deal of, uh, of pleasure that I have the opportunity to read this proclamation as a, a Marine Corps veteran myself uh, and seeing a lot of veterans out in the audience. I just wanna start by saying thank you so much for your service to this country, for defending our freedoms and for defending this nation and with, for your family members. I know that serving in the military is a family effort. It's not just uh, the service man or woman that's in there. It's a whole family that's dedicated their lives in uh, defense of the freedoms of this country and stuff. And I want to say thank you to you. My dad was 20 years in the Army. My brother-in-law is a one star in the Air Force. My nephew is in the Navy. We have a long tradition of military service. And I, I know the sacrifices that both you as servicemen and women and your families make. So thank you so much for what you do for our country. So this proclamation in the matter for claiming August 7th, 2016, Purple Heart Day in Spokane County. First known as the badge of military merit, the Purple Heart is our nation's oldest military medal, was established on August 7th, 1782 by General George Washington. The Purple Heart is a combat, combat decoration awarded to members of the armed forces of the United States of America who are wounded by an instrument of war in the hands of the enemy and posthumously to the next of kin in the name of those who are killed in action or die of wounds received in action. This mission of the military, Order of the Purple Heart, is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veterans and their families, promote patriotism, support legislative initiatives, and most importantly, make sure we never forget. Spokane County, home to Fairchild Air Force Base, enjoys a unique relationship with our nation's military and demonstrates its support and appreciation for those servicemen and women in our community at every opportunity. As we celebrate our freedom, we should be mindful that this is a gift of life given to each of us by the men and women who bravely served and continue to serve our country and the ultimate sacrifices they have made on our behalf. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Spokane County, Washington, do hereby proclaim August 7th, 2016, Purple Heart Day in Spokane County, and urge all residents to join us in recognizing and commending all active American military service men and women, veterans, and fallen military hero heroes, especially those who have gallantly earned a Purple Heart in the name of freedom, dated this 19th day of July, 2016. And I'm going to ask Chuck Elmer to come forward. No. Or is there somebody else going to be receiving I the have, proclamation? I have someone else, but first, that okay. was read that was in as the a motion. of a motion. Do I have a second? Absolutely, second. So I have a motion and a second, proclaiming August 7th, 2016, Purple Heart Day. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Passes three to, to three to zero. We have Randy Howard here with us today, um, who will be accepting the proclamation. And Randy, if you would like to say a few words, you're welcome to, or if there's anyone else who would like to uh, speak on behalf of this proclamation, you're welcome yeah, to. Yeah, uh, just they'll tell each one, uh, each one will stand up and tell you their service, who they served with and where. Uh, two times Vietnam, Army Airborne Ranger, five Purple Hearts. Oh, thank you. Terry Lowry, I was wounded March 5th, 1969. I served with the AmeriCal Division of 198th Light Infantry Brigade. Jerry Bain, 1949, I read the Audie Murphy story. You're all familiar with Audie Murphy. 1950, June 25th, the Korean War broke out. And I said, I'm going, the wife, my mother says, no way. She wouldn't sign. I told her I, I would join the French Foreign Legion. I'd run away. But anyway, I enlisted. I did 13 months of combat in Korea. Airborne Ranger. Uh, I come back and trained, jump school, and Ranger physical training. 
as a platoon sergeant. I went back the second time, was wounded April of 53. And Purple Heart, Silver Star, seven service bronze stars, and a crazy kid. Still. Thank you. Thank you. Joel Johnson and I served with the uh, 25th Division in the 23rd uh, Regiment and I was uh, wounded October 12th and I was able to recover and finish my tour. So I did the Tet Offensive and various other ones after that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Drew Bopp, uh, 1st Battalion, 13th Marines, Vietnam, 68 and 69, wounded February 69. I'm Linda Carter, and I'm here for my husband, Art, who passed away in February. He served in Vietnam, but I want to say that I'm very grateful and happy that the, the guys are getting this recognition. They really deserve it. All of them who are wounded are disabled in some way or another. They don't complain. And the military of the Purple Heart works so hard to help other veterans. And I love to see them recognized. They deserve it. They're all my heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming down and joining us tonight and for sharing with us um, who you are and your experience, and, and uh, it's an honor for us to be able to honor you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We will. Thank you. Have a great evening. Yes, you're not required to stay through the rest of the hearings. <laughs> and we understand. It's great when we can share, take an opportunity to share our evening with other organizations, especially those who've been involved in our military. Yes, Commissioner French. Well, and just to follow up on that, I know all three of us had the opportunity to uh, participate in the change of command out at Fairchild Air Force Base uh, uh, this morning, and I think that's just another example of the commitment and dedication that you know we as a county have to our military and and uh, also the efforts out at Fairchild and and uh, uh, celebrate the uh, the accomplishments of uh, Colonel McDaniels but also uh, uh, with open arms welcome the new uh, uh, commander uh, you know Colonel Samuelson so uh, uh, I want to say thank you to both of you for doing that and we have a new colonel at Fairchild for the ne next two years I'm going to train up a new one as our community. So and with that, we, we'll move on to hearing item number five. Um, consider declaring surplus certain county-owned property. Assessor's parcel number 45222.0837. Uh, our county engineer, Mitch Reister. Good evening, commissioners. Mitch Reister, county engineer. I'm going to introduce Deborah Ferkins, our property manager, to cover uh, items five and the subsequent item number six. So, Deborah. Good evening, commissioners. Um, item number five, considering de declaring surplus certain county-owned property located on McDonald Road south of the old Milwaukee Railroad right-of-way. Assessor's parcel number 45222.0837. This property was purchased by a statutory warranty deed on August 2nd of 1991 for $15,756.70. This property was purchased to assist in the staging and the widening of the proposed couplet at that time. Our former county engineer, Bob Bergman, found this property to be unnecessary to our holdings in um, to that, uh, 2014. The city of Spokane Valley was also contacted and at first wanted to purchase this property, but then declined after an appraisal was done. The appraisal um, for the property by Valbridge 
property advisors indicated a value of $36,750. But as of today, at 2 o'clock, I received a new appraisal evaluation for $32,000. The property is approximately 9,800 square feet and is zoned corridor mixed use. I recommend that the Board of County um, Commissioners surplus this property. Can you point out the parcel up on the map, please? Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you. I, I, I know I was, I was looking at, I couldn't see the black line until you pointed it out. That makes sense. Okay. So because it, the advertised appraisal, the appraisal came in less than the advertised amount for the sale. Yes. But at this action that I'm asking you to do right now is to surplus, to, surpr yeah. surplus the property to the county's needs. The I county see. does not need We're this not actually piece. selling this one yet. Not right now. Not, we'll do that in the that, six. That's under six. Okay. So the recommendation from the county engineer is to actually to declare surplus this the property. property surplus. Well, no, it's public hearing. So do you have any questions for staff before we open up for the public hearing? Okay. Then I might go ahead. Um, item number five is a, a hearing item. So I'll open up public hearing for anyone who wishes to testify on item number five. For anyone wishing to testify on item number five. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify. Seeing no one move forward, I'll go ahead and close the hearing and I will look for a motion. She's got it. You're gonna make the motion? Do you have yeah. a question? No, I'm gonna read the motion. Okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the board does hereby declare the above described parcel of property, which is assessor's parcel number 45222, Point zero eight three seven as surplus um, to the needs of Spokane County and as such the same may be disposed of as provided for in the Spokane County Code. Second. I have a motion and a second to declare assessor parcel number 45222.0837 surplus um, to the county. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. That then takes us to item number six, the hearing item, which is to consider selling that parcel to the public. So I'll go ahead and Deborah, you can explain the next steps on this one. Okay. Our current offer that we had on the piece of property was withdrawn um, about half an hour ago. Um, but they have submitted a new offer for $32,000 that I will come before you again to do so that we have it fully advertised at that value. But right now, um, we do have that piece of property for $36,750. I don't think anybody in our audience wishes to, no. Nobody in the audience wishes to make an offer at that amount. So we can just cancel this meeting um, on this item. Mr. Maceo, do we have do we have to do a formal hearing on it? At the Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Ferkins has advised the board that the offer has been withdraw, withdrawn. There are no people here, so for all practical purpose, I think the board can vote to terminate the public hearing on this particular item, and Ms. Ferkins will reschedule a public hearing based upon the new offer. So yes. the motion would be simply to terminate the public hearing as scheduled this evening on this item. So move. I have a motion and a second to terminate the public hearing um, scheduled on item number six tonight as we have no offers um, on this parcel and there's no one in the audience tonight who which wishes to purchase this. Um, and then this item will be uh, re-advertised at the new appraised price and uh, open again for the, to the public for resale. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. That brings us to item number seven on our agenda, which is uh, the second of two open public forums. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to testify at our open public forum? I have no slips. Second call for anyone wishing to testify and third and final call. Seeing no one move forward, I'm gonna go ahead and close our open public forum. And that brings us to item number eight, which is adjournment. So quick meeting tonight. Everyone have a great sunny uh, evening. Thank you.